Hi, my name is Kobi Samgangwa. I am a student at University of the Western Cape in South Africa. This is my GIS conservation project. I must emphasize it is not for money, it is for marks. I will do a digital story about how does conservation planning interferes with land use politics. The digital story will also entail how one can do a conservation planning for a certain place. This is a map of Uganda, a country that I will attempt to make a conservation plan for. Uganda has many protected areas, but they are too small. The large ones are very few, which makes small species at risk of being lost, since the available habitats cannot accommodate them. Uganda is well known because of the Lake Victoria, a very big lake harboring many organisms, and the Kidwepo Valley, which also has numerous endemic species. The capital town of Uganda is Kambala. As I was sitting down thinking, okay, the question of the matter here is what does the conflict between conservation planning and land use politics? This is the map showing the land use in Uganda. Uganda has many vegetation areas. The big trees, grasslands, fairly it is a green country also. This table shows how much area in kilometer squared is used for each land use in the country. It looks like there is too much cultivated and water areas. There are many vegetation areas in Uganda, either having trees or shrubs or sparse herbaceous. This is why I have mentioned before that Uganda is a green country, if I am allowed to label it that way. This is how Uganda looks like with no green areas as observed. Inland water could take too much space in the absence of green areas. In these slides, I have written about the important information one would need for Uganda, like its coordinates in case you are willing to go there, because in the end, Uganda is a really nice place to consider visiting. Even for your honeymoon, this would help to learn more about the biodiversity and the people who knows, perhaps learn some new languages, Swahili, and add that to your CV. This is the continuation of the introduction. One thing noticeable and shocking is that the annual contribution of the ecosystem is estimated to have decreased from 5 million US dollars in 2005 to 4 US dollars million in 2010 due to mainly deforestation. For the methods, I have tried to write them in point form so that anybody who want to repeat my experiment and my way to do a conservation planning for Uganda can follow these step by step. However, if you need more information, you can also search online. I chose Uganda as a country for my project because based on nature, Uganda is a very nice country, very attractive, the people are amazing, how they do things, and because Uganda has a very few scientific research, and yet is a home to many species. Not to mention that some are only found nowhere else in the world, but in Uganda only. A country like this needs to be protected. The ICN suggests that for each taxa, at least 10% of its species should be protected. This means that only 10%, if possibly and wishfully, more than 10% can be conserved, even 100% for that matter. To set the conservation targets, I had to first understand the relationship between habitat in which the species lives in and what does the threats of each species are. For bigger threats in areas, a target percent can increase. However, in my country's case, the aim is to protect 10% of each species tarsal. This is a list of threatened species found in Uganda and a site where you can find threatened species for any country. This pie chart allows one to see which taxa are more threatened in order to find ways to conserve it. 
in Uganda, more fishes, plants, birds, and mammals are threatened. For my conservation targets, I chose 20 animals, 5 plants, and 5 habitats to conserve. I know mostly are under production already, but as for my project, I needed them. There are two types of conservation that I would like to do. One is a species specific where I would like to conserve a total of 25 species. The other one is a habitat conservation since I have found that, that most species in the country are threatened by habitat loss. This is a map of Uganda showing its places. Uganda is also surrounded by Congo, Sudan, Kenya and Tanzania. So they share the most of their land uses. As mentioned before, Uganda is not a dry area. It is full of water. Here are the water lines. Conservation can be defined as a way of protecting the land, its resources, together with the species found there. In this project, I used a systemic, a systematic approach using hexagons. A systematic approach has been very easy approach to use when doing a conservation analysis because it is comparable and has a strong scientific basis. These are the categories or keys showing what level of extension X species is in and what does it mean. Starting with the animal of Uganda, I use 20 of them. They are all endemic to Uganda. This first one is an endemic species to Uganda known as Dasimis montanus. It also has a distribution map which is a dark map with some pink lines showing how it is distributed within the country. Another rodent Pelomis iseli, a bird, Plosia spicadis, a frog, Ametophranus vitatus, a fish, Haplochromis elocephalus, a cheetah, Asononyx jubertus, a lion, Panthera leo, a water pig, Hippopotamus amphibius, an elephant, Loxodonta africana, a chimp, Pentroglodytes, Gorilla Beringay, Giraffa Camelopardalis, Potamagale Velox, Crocidura Selina, Micropotamagale Ruenzori, Tracheorectis Ancolae, Mysorex Blerina, Lutra Maculocalis, Otomops Mantienteni, and Panthera Paras. I am also planning to conserve at least five plants in Uganda. Cola bracteata, an endemic plant in Uganda, it is a species that is only found in this country, which is the reason why I chose Uganda as my project country, because it is species like this that have no information from the IUCN data from GBIF. As I'm talking, people would be trembling on it and it would go extinct because nobody is aware of it. There is also Pseudospondyl microcarpa, Ficus natalensis, Bridelia metranda, Teclia nobilis. Historically important conservation worthy areas were determined based on a scoring approach which ranked to predetermined important regions in order for their importance. Such approaches include hotspot analysis, the gap analysis and other optimizing strategies. The hotspot analysis, summing species and designating the richest sites as those worthy of conservation. This usually results in redundant sands being included. Iterative procedures are the simplest technique to use when considering optimizing approach as reserve selection, e.g. the rarity. That's why I calculated the rarity in all the habitats that I would like to conserve. The Lake Victoria having 20% of my species targets, the habitat is not replaceable because there is one endemic species that lives here. The Greater Virunga landscape having 24% of my species targets, the Ugandan Kidepo Valley, the Kidepo Valley has about 16% of my species targets. 
There is also a Ugandan Murchison Falls having 60% same as Kidebo Valley. They all have 16% of my species targets. There is also a Betwin Reef region and the percentage of species is 28. In this table I have made showing the amount of species each habitat has this helped me know my priorities when it comes to conservation. Uganda has seven, 12 protected areas. Some are fairly small and some are very big. Maran area is not protected at all. These are the larger protected areas. Kidebo Valley and Murchison Falls are also among them as I have also decided to protect them. Only one hotspot in Uganda, the Eastern Anfromotane. It is recognized as the high conservation area. There are also six ecoregions, some in small fractions, but the Victoria Basin Forest, Savannah Mosaic is the largest. It almost covers the entire country. Here are the catchment maps. Number one is from Agview and the others from Idrisi or Terset, just for comparison. These are the cities and towns and locations in Uganda. The building of roads and rails in Uganda causes fragmentation which leads to habitat loss, hence threatening spaces. This is the urban cost. The pink areas are very costly to manage because they are in the center and in urban areas. Mostly we find urban areas hard to protect because everybody is so busy moving to these places and the land is so small when it comes to the land area in hectares. The final cost indicating the budget for conservation, it is clear that urban areas are very expensive to manage. These are the croplands in Uganda, areas where there are possible plantings. Maxan software is a software that I use to estimate the cost for the conservation. Maxan minimizes the cost while meeting user-defined targets. The land tenor is used to select new reserves to meet conservation targets. For the systemic approach, here are the maxen results. Out of the 25 species that I was willing to conserve, only 3 species would be left unprotected. As I said before, 50% of the target species was met in the conservation planning because out of the 25, 22 would be protected. That is 88%. It is even more than the 50% that I wanted to protect. So that's why I use the systematic approach because it is transparent, objective, and comparable. This is the current protection of Uganda. Its hectares used to protect species. According to my conservation planning, this will be the future of Uganda when additional protected areas are taken into consideration, the ones that I've just done. The species prone to extinction show a decline in population size. The population also fluctuates and sometimes the population are very small. These are the species we need to look after, hence I was doing this conservation planning project. These are the causes of extinction. Habitat loss in Uganda can be due to any of these threats. Ecological conservation was also done to compare with the systemic approach. And it ended up taking almost the entire country, which means that it is not possible to protect the whole country. This interferes with the land use politics. The land has also to be used for some other things, not for conservation of some species only. All of this information I have generated can be used to create and manage new reserves and also educate people about the risks this species are prone to. 
This next slide show a summary of my country. The protected areas highlighting Uganda from 2008 are shown here. Currently, most of the top protected areas are privately managed reserves, which illustrate the importance of managing areas. For my conservation planning, I calculated the area in hectares. Currently, only 9% is managed and protected. The additional that I have proposed is 30% of the country's land, which means that for my conservation planning, almost 40% of the country must be protected. However, if not, some mobile species can be relocated to suitable already managed areas. All thanks to the previous research articles for giving me better understanding for my country. All the sources that I have used are listed in the references. And again, all thanks to people who made the species images available for use. So as to know what does what needs to be conserved it looks like. Thank you.